XRPL already has payments capabilities, which is obviously essential for cross-border payments. But as you look to really replicate traditional finance or bring a lot more of these use cases onto the blockchain, the need for credit origination is clear. The way we're doing this on XRPL is a little bit different than, than what you see in other DeFi ecosystems. So my name is Jasmine. I usually go by Jazzy. Uh, I lead the product team on RippleX, uh, and it's a group of really awesome product managers, product marketers, and tech docs writers. And we focus on contributing to uh, the XRPL's core capabilities. So multi-purpose tokens is a new standard uh, for issuing tokens, fungible tokens, on the XRP ledger. And it works quite differently from the existing fungible token standard, which basically IOUs exist as a relationship between two different accounts. So it's not its own thing or its own token. MPTs, on the other hand, is a standalone token object. So if you issue it onto the ledger, you now have a net new object, not just a relationship between two accounts. So this is really helpful for a number of, of different reasons, particularly uh, with certain asset classes within real world assets, um, because you can do a number of different things with it. You can have a fixed supply, for example, which functions a little bit more similarly to ERC-20 tokens on Ethereum. You can add metadata directly on that token object. So you can describe, for example, that this is a bond with a certain coupon, a uh, certain interest rate. So it has a number of ad advantages like that over the, the IOU standard for issuances. One other aspect of uh, MPTs that stands out a lot is the scalability. MPTs is a much lighter weight token object than IOUs, for example. So much better in terms of ledger scale and, and long-term growth as more and more assets are issued on the XRP. There's a number of, of key aspects here. Um, convenience in terms of all of the different factors that you can adjust for an issuance, whether that's uh, compliance, for example, or configurability in terms of can this asset be transferred, can it not, what can you buy it with? So it really gives a lot of control back to the issuer, which is, is really helpful for real world assets. Uh, the metadata is really useful. Uh, if you're issuing a bond token, for example, you can add in that information about uh, you know, what the asset is, what the rates are, so that a user uh, is aware of what what type of asset they're holding on chain. So usability goes up a lot with the use of, of MPTs. So MPTs will be backward compatible with all of the existing compliance features on the XRP ledger, including freeze, hopefully deep freeze soon once that's available, clawback function as well. Uh, so all of the uh, token level compliance features will work with MPTs. The permission dex is a neat feature that builds on a couple different capabilities of the XRP ledger. So of course, there's been an order book based dex natively on the XRPL at the protocol level uh, for over a decade now. And we're introducing a new feature called permission domains. And permission domains basically allows you to create a ring fence around a protocol on the XRPL to add in various compliance features. Uh, so it will also use uh, credentials, for example. So you can think of it like if there's a permission section of a park or a party, and basically only people that have this certain tag on their jacket are able to come in to that section. Permission domains plus credentials works exactly like that. And when you apply that over the DEX, you now have that gating around the decentralized exchange. So only uh, individuals or accounts that have a particular credential are eligible to participate in that permission domain of the DEX. And that's how we uh, introduce permission, um, the permission DEX. So any regulated institution needs to know who their counterparties are in order to allow for trade to participate in trade. And so, you know, Ripple is one example of that. Ripple, you know, isn't able to trade with unknown actors because, you know, there's, there's sanctions laws, there's various KYC mandates that they must abide by. And so in order for Ripple to bring Ripple payments onto the decentralized exchange and access those advantages, for example, they will need to know that everyone is KYC'd, everyone passes AML checks, and the permission DEX allows you to do that. We're introducing a, a new lending protocol uh, to the XRP ledger. It will allow for credit origination on chain. And the way that it works is basically users can deposit capital into a single asset vault uh, and receive a share token, just like you know one side of the automated market maker. And then essentially you can have what's called a loan broker uh, that will create a new, a new loan for a particular borrower. 
and that will remove liquidity from the single asset vault and create uh, a fixed term interest bearing uh, loan for a particular borrower. In terms of risk management, there's a couple different paths there. You can do off-chain underwriting, or you can have collateral on-chain in a third-party custodian uh, like BitGo, for example, or Anchorage, who can hold on to that collateral um, throughout the life cycle of the loan uh, as the borrower repays to ensure uh, loss mitigation and, and risk minimization for the lenders. Having the ability to originate credit on the blockchain is, is huge. So it's not an over-collateralized money market protocol, uh, which is the uh, standard of, of what you'll see on other chains. It doesn't mean we won't ever build money market over collateralization on chain, but we're starting with just the basic primitive of what we see as most essential, what we see institutions asking for, which is the ability to originate credit on chain. And this will allow for you know leverage against crypto assets, which is a huge use case that we're seeing uh, for better, better collateral management and better use of, of collateral on chain. And really just giving an opportunity for token holders to create leverage positions against their assets, uh, which we know will, will create a lot of value. I mean, they use a lot of the same pieces, right? Like you can use the permission domains, for example, to create permissioning on the DEX, to create permissioning on the lending protocol. They both use MPTs, they both use credentials. So a lot of the different money Legos or composable pieces on the XRPL are used to build the lending protocol and the DEX, for example. Um, and they'll definitely be compatible in terms of use cases. So if you take out you know, a leverage position using the lending protocol, you can then trade on the DEX with that additional leverage or additional capital. So they're definitely compatible and I think we'll work together in order to encourage growth on the ledger and, and on the, the, the basically the on-chain economy on the XRP ledger.